Um, some of the limitations, uh, location, just talked about. Um, one of the big ones, and th this, is, this is often forgotten in the, when comparisons are made between our results and other economic studies, we're only looking at direct jobs related to the well on site. Uh, the secondary effects, you know, additional purchases in the community by the companies or supporting service industries are not considered in this. The, uh, the impact of the workers spending the money locally, so all kind of the multiplier effects, none of those are in included in here. And so uh, um, the, our earlier study, um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Considine uh, uh, report that came out a year or so ago. The, the earlier study I saw publicly folks using our earlier study comparing the results from our study to the Considine report saying the numbers are very, very different. Something's got to be wrong here. It's apples and oranges. Considine, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying Considine did things correct, but the Considine report included multiplier effects and kind of all the, the, the trickle down throughout the economy. This does not do that. And so you, you shouldn't be comparing these results to the kind of the straight economic impact. You know, that, the supply chain, all that stuff um, um, uh, is not in there. Uh, and uh, assumptions, um, you can read that. Um, instead of talk, you know, uh, basically be behind the model, um, full-time equivalents, uh, compressor stations, one for every 20 wells, that's to, to boost the, the pressure in the wells. Um, and one of the things we ask is their, their projections of how many drilling rigs they bring in, and so the assumption is that what they told us was, was accurate. Um, we also looked at, I had to talk to folks about production facilities. This, this is for the, uh, the, the wet gas and separating out the, uh, the other additives, the employment requirements there. And then we also had to kind of calculate what the production curve would be for our individual well or estimate that because that, the, the amount of production out of the well influences the, the dollars coming back for employment needs. Um, and we also assumed, you know, how many required processing, which does link. So, Tim, back. where did those assumptions come from? Do you know how those got set? They, they came from talking to kind of key informants of, okay, your ballpark, you know, how, how many of the wells that you're drilling and what part within the region require processing versus not. And so, you know, there, there, were, there were not numbers just pulled out of the air. There were tried to be educated guesses in there. Um, from the, the thing that, since we base this on uh, uh, employment per well, what's really critical is to have an estimate in there how many wells are actually going to be drilled. And, and we got that from talking with uh, the industry folks. Uh, if you go through a lot of the, the investor reports that companies put out, a lot of them have a lot of information about projections and what they're planning to do, what they've done, yields. We went through those to kind of make sure that those were consistent with what we were hearing verbally from, from folks, um, newspaper accounts, other kinds of things, uh, other places. We tried to make sure that our projections of the wells that they were going to build um, were fairly, um, uh, fairly accurate. Um, what we found is, um, and I'll show you numbers in a moment here, that, that southwest Pennsylvania, at least, that there's been a, a kind of a, um, a slowing of the growth in, dr in drilling down there. And what we're hearing kind of anecdotally is some part is because they're drilling wells, but because they require processing capability, they've reached the point where, at least temporarily, they don't have the processing capacity for the gas. And so they've had to slow down uh, um, there. And so that, that very much has influenced that. Um, they expect it to pick up. Um, and the, the other element in the southwest is there's lots of, uh, or relatively speaking, a lot of the corporate jobs are down there. The, the, the folks who are moving in from out of state to manage and run the Marcellus operations here in Pennsylvania, a lot of those firms are locating in the, in the southwest. Yeah. Is this a discussion day or is this Yeah, a yeah, yeah. Is this a discussion? Yeah. Why not out of line asking questions? No, no. Southwest, is it gas capacity or is it liquids capacity? That they're slowing on. Uh, it's my, my capacity to process and market NGLs, or is it liquids capacity and gas capacity? What, what, my understanding from the folks who did the interviews on this is is it's the processing capacity for the gas. It's not that your know, pipeline is a concern as well, but it, right now it is the processing capacity for the wells that they're bringing online that they don't have enough capability within the existing infrastructure to be able to to take out all the the additional things. Right, and and that's why as they build more, hopefully, you know, the the intent is that they'll be able to, uh, to do better at that. If you were talking about the north, northern tier and central, there it's, it's pipeline. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you know, northern tier, it's northern dry gas. There isn't there isn't the same requirements yeah. here. So different, different part of the state, different. Different issues. Right. Now, th th this, is th this is drilling activity in the southwest in the, in the five counties we looked at. This is from DEP. It's permits by year. It's wells by years. It's the number of rigs operating. Um, 
within that within that time. And the uh, um, couple of things to notice is the uh, actually I don't have rigs there, but the, the the rig count is actually lower now than it was uh, a year or so ago. Um, there, there's one fewer rigs than there was uh, when there were than there were previously. The other is is that um, uh, the the number of completed wells. Now the percentages calculated here are we basically took the eight uh, eight eight month projection of what drilling up to here and said, okay, if the remaining four months continue at the same pace, how many total wells would there be completed or total permits? Based on that, the actual number of wells in the Southwest is de will decrease a, uh, a little bit over um, compared to, to previous years. Um, whereas Pennsylvania overall, there's a 77% increase in the number of wells that have been drilled. And so things are really still booming in the Northern tier and Northeast. Southwest, it's slowing down and, and it's that capacity issue. Questions or comments about this? Um, you know, year change. You know, 281 percent increase in permits between you know years. You can you can see um, you can see it's increasing. Yeah, Nancy. Can you talk about the um, rigs and wells columns. Yeah. Um, so the the number of rigs um, is much less, obviously, than the number of wells. Is that yeah. does that indicate that rigs are moving from well to well, or they oh, are yeah. aggregating multiple wells at one rig? Uh, right now, they're by and large they're moving the wells. Uh, I mean, they're moving the rigs to wells because one of the one of the the challenges the industry is trying to do right now is they've got they have land leased, but they need to lock in those leases because if they don't drill on the, they don't drill on the leased land, they'll have to release the land after that lease expires. And so drilling one well holds that holds that land. So right now, most of them are they're drilling one well on a drilling unit, and then they move the, the drilling rig to another drilling unit to lock that in. And the plan is, what they say is, they'll go back later and drill the additional wells um, on that same well pad. And so the crew that's associated with the rig... Travels with the rig. With. Exactly, right. And, and, and that's why from a workforce side, the number of rigs is really critical because, you know, it, it's, not just the, it's not just the crew on that rig, but it's also then the associated... Uh, the number of rigs limits how many wells you can drill. So the more rigs you got, the more landmen you need, the more uh, um, surveying, the more seismic. Likewise, you need more pipeline and other kind of the infrastructure development on there. And so fewer rigs means l less of a need for that. factor in that is the price of natural gas right now. So that's why they're drilling one, because mm -hmm. the price is the price of natural gas. Mm -hmm. the uh, um, them, so they want to hold that. Mm -hmm. All the leases, but they're not developing more no, the, it's the speculation. You, you can speculate along those lines. It, w this, what I've been hearing more is that it's it's the f because of the number of rigs they have and the number of train crews isn't large enough to be able to lock in all the leases. Um, you know, they're talking millions of dollars for the lease value for a drilling unit, and if you don't put a well on that you're going to have to renegotiate with yeah. the landowner. And a lot of those leases, when they renegotiate, the landowners are going to want more than what they were generally And I'll give you for. a really extreme example. My neighbor, I live in the country. My neighbor... Uh, you live in Lycoming County, right? I live in Lycoming County. My neighbor uh, leased their land for $2 an acre um, five years ago. And that is, uh, you know, uh, by what, a thousand times uh, smaller than what current... I don't yeah. even know what current leases are going for. And so do they want their lease to expire? Absolutely. Their goal would be to have that expire. Right. And it would be the goal of the company where they lease to not have that, that expire. And right. I think that's really where, where that, you're that, getting that drill down. You drill one in. Right. And that's a, real, that's a real story, by the way, poor people. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and the other dynamic companies are also starting to hear reports of expanding. When we say a drilling unit, is, is you know, that's the land they're aggregating. When they drill a well, that holds that um, by production. Um, there is also pressure to increase the size of the drilling units, and they say, okay, it's a larger drilling unit, which means one well will hold more land than it would otherwise, and so there, there's a pushback. But, but it's largely, is my interpretation when I'm hearing, is it's largely an element of investment. They've already invested money in leases. If they don't put a well in, that money's gone, and, let and, me they, and they, say need, one more they need thing to renegotiate. I've kind of learned along the way is that, okay, so I'm, let's say Tim and I are neighbors, and I negotiate with one company, and he negotiates with another, and they want to drill on my land, but it's going to come down, it's going to turn and go under his. He, they've got a problem because they don't own that lease. So there's really also the issue of the leases being uh, yeah. contiguous to each other for the same company so that they're able right. to um, uh, uh, They're able to do that, drill. right. 
And right. that is another huge issue in if they were to lose a key piece in there, it's like they lose right away. If you right. think about it, it's the comparable piece. Right. And so that's right. also one that makes them want to keep keep those leases active. Right. Yeah. Economics clearly is a piece of it, but yeah, can I just quick clarification that the the well, the single well includes all the horizontal uh, drillings that go out radially from that one rig could actually do like five uh, wells, right? Uh, yeah, let me, let me, let me rephrase this just to make sure that I'm uh, An individual well goes down, if it's, if it's horizontal, it, it goes horizontal, but there's one lateral per hour, a well. What, 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 but you can end up with multiple wells on one pad. And so each one well would go this way, another well would go down, and then parallel, a third would go. They're all on the same pad, but, but they're separate wells. But these numbers would be... Like on one pad, there might be six wells drilled. Pot drilled. Pot potentially long run, but, but six. Yeah, yeah, if if there were six on one well pad, this would be counted as six. But it might be but counted as one rig. It would be. Uh, well, th this is the, the the number of rigs operating. Operating. Right okay. in, in in that region, but but right now most of the drilling is is still one uh, one well per pad to hold it, and then they're, they're coming back. I mean, in our up in the northern tier, because there's not enough pipeline, a lot of times they're drilling and capping because there's no place to put the gas right now, no yeah. place to send it. But yeah. they're holding their lease then. Uh, well, depending on how leases are written, a quick, cheap, shallow gas well holds that lease if mm -hmm. it was not a vertical severance in it. Okay. And so in western Pennsylvania, there's a lot of quick, cheap, shallow gas wells being drilled to lock in leases. Are, are you seeing that in Clearfield County? Yes. Um, That's interesting. Okay, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, so in other words, this is what I'm trying to understand. Is yeah. It's not it's not possible to drill down and then drill out horizontally in that way and drill out horizontally that way. You have to you have to drill separate wells. You drill a separate well for each of those horizontal. They, they might only be they might only be 10, 15 right. feet apart. Right. And, and eventually what they're doing, they're doing in Barnett is they'll have the rig, they'll drill one hole, and then they'll simply move it, you know, 15, 20 feet over, they'll drill the second one, they'll move it again. And I, the but each I is a separate. It had a hydraulic system on it that actually huh. moved the drill over to do the next, to do the next yeah. uh, well down. So they didn't actually have to disassemble and reassemble. It was a pretty incredibly high tech operation in terms of moving this huge well, or this huge rig. Just a little bit to to drill another to drill another well. Yeah. Are there other questions about this? All right. Um, based on the estimates from the kind of the, the companies and the, the data, we calculated uh, kind of what the um, the likely um, and I think that's from here to here the likely number of wells that would be drilled each year in the southwest. Um, and the high is at the red, and the low is. Is here. This is what was actually done. So we are, you know, we are estimating a slight increase over time. Um, so this is the number of wells that we estimated. And again, because our employment estimates are based on the number of wells, uh, this is the 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 medium likelihood the the jobs uh, required uh, created uh, for drilling. Uh, the green is the drilling. The light blue is the uh, uh, production. And uh, you know, there's the pre-production. So you remember the kind of the, the graph I showed, kind of a period over time with the red and blue. This is another way of looking at that, um, kind of all, all lumped together. Um, majority of jobs, obviously, are in the drilling and pre-drilling. This amount here slowly increases over time, um, and that's during the production phase. And, and once a well comes online, those jobs stay for 30, 50 years, however long that those wells are in production. So, so I this amount kind of will build over time. Really say that again a little stronger too. Yeah. These are cumulative. Yeah. The, the, jobs the blues in blue are. are cumulative, meaning they don't go away. These are could go away if the drilling stopped, but these because they're production jobs will stay because these are based on drill well, wells that have already been drilled. Right. And so they become the long-term employment in the state of Pennsylvania. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Or elsewhere. You should say, or elsewhere. So the, these, you can see the numbers here. It's you know, a little bit over 10,000. These numbers are smaller than you know, the Considine Report, a lot of the other reports out there. Um, one of the reasons is it's regional. It's only five counties. It's not um, or five counties. It's not. Um, it, it's not the whole state, but it also is. It's the direct jobs. It's not the multiplier effects. It's not the supporting uh, industries and the, the others as well, too.